the river is actually a living presence that you're always aware of. It has quite a deep resonance for me. After the major floods, it just seemed silly not to consider building something from scratch. And I didn't want to move again. I had put down roots here, I wanted to stay. The idea was that the house would appear to float in the garden. Because it was going to be raised on steel posts, allowing flood water to flow underneath the house, the choice of materials was really to do with what would suit the river environment. And I really felt that wooden cladding was, was one of those elements. The central axis, which is kind of north-south, this, this main room, that was the kind of basis from which we started. That key view in, in both directions. Some of the joinery in the house was specifically designed to keep the surfaces as flush as possible. The eye can just follow that line seamlessly out through the windows. The garden is as important to me as the house. It has connected me to the seasons, to the place. I started collecting mid-century furniture I said, you know, I would like the house to contain this furniture and to feature it. I am very happy being here on my own, but equally it is a great place to entertain and to have the family staying over. The first winter after the house was built, there was water right under the house out the other side. And for the first time, I wasn't the least bit perturbed. I remember neighbors walking by and saying, the house looked as though it was designed to have water underneath it. I don't think I appreciated the extent to which good architecture can actually transform the way you feel and the way you live. The sheer practical elements of the house. It has been designed for me to grow old and live here for the rest of my life. We've constructed something that feels very personal, but also I feel like I've been accepted by the place. I belong here now.